What's up, everybody? It's your favorite Knight of Ren's favorite nerd, and today we are finally looking at a Knight of Ren. Our first review here on a Knight of Ren, and I hope not our last. So I'm anxious to take a look at it. This is from the Vintage Collection, the three and three quarter collection. Let's start with the one accessory. So he comes with an axe, and it's painted nicely. We have the metallic silver, the gold, silver and gold, and then the burgundy on the straps, and then you have the axe head itself, which has like some copper dry brushing on top of silver. And then this will plug in, let me make sure I got it the right way, here. And you're in service. So let's talk about the figure. And the head is on a double ball peg. The head itself has this outer piece connected to it. Like it's, a, I'm pretty sure it's glued because it's stuck in fairly well. And I, if I, if there's one thing I know about Hasbro and kind of capes and that kind of stuff, if it's not glued in, it's coming off ASAP, ASAP Rocky. Same for his, his uh, kind of cape here. So the nice thing is you have the figure, right? And then you have the cape and then you have the kind of headdress that sits on top. It, and it seems pretty seamless and it, it doesn't get in the way of articulation. You have a double ball peg from the head into the neck and decent down, decent up, side to side, attitude, etc. So it works fairly well. Then you have the brown added to the cape like and it's done extremely well. Like that's better weathering than we see on black series, <laughs> you know, which is crazy. Silver paint and then some black gloss paint added to the lenses, nose piece, and kind of side cheek pieces there. We have more weathering done with this gray on the black here, here, and then more of the brown added at the bottom. I feel like it's a single ball peg from the abdomen into the chest. That gets you the swivel and that roundabout movement. You have disc hinge at the shoulder. It gets you just about 90 degrees and around. You have a single hinged elbow with a swivel there for your bicep. And then you have the gauntlets that are painted two shades of silver. And then you have the wrist, which are on hinges up and down and swivel where they plug in. Silver paint here on the belt. Decent sculpt work throughout with all of the kind of layers of fabric and such and, and kind of wrinkles and so forth. Looks very good. Same for the other side. So we have these hip things again, and we're probably going to be talking about this for the whole wave. I just I just don't know if it's the best choice. So if you guys remember the Marvel Universe, they used ball pegs, but they had a hard time standing. So these guys stand better generally, but they use basically disc hinges that plug in to the upper part of the pelvis. So as a result, you do get the full Van Dam, and then you can swivel it, and get the, I mean, pretty much the leg completely forward, but then you have to move at the bot at the um, at the thigh swivel to kind of get it forward. And it's not the worst design. It's just you have, I have a hard time squaring it up when I want to just stand because you got to grab, you got to make sure the hips are square, and then you have to rotate the thigh back around without rotating at the hip, and it's just a bit obnoxious. And like I said, I'm not sure if it's the best choice. It may be, but. It's been a while since I've dealt with the Marvel ones, and I, I remember they used to drive me nuts as well. So, but right now, this one in particular is really giving me a hard time. Give me a hard time. And then we have basically the same sort of connection at the knee. So it's a disc hinge, and then it goes up into the leg. So you'll get another swivel there in addition to the thigh swivel. And then the ankles are just on tilt, so they tilt up and they tilt down, which is unfortunately a little on the useless side. Uh, the rocker is kind of more important, but once again, with all of that articulation, you do end up losing um, some stability in a, in a figure this size. So it's give and take. I'm not sure if I need the Knights of Ren to be hyper articulated. I think that generally this is the type of character where you could have him be five POA and be fine, you know, uh, but it's, it's nice to have either way because they did a really good job, all things considered. And there's my Knight of Ren. I have him down here on my second first order shelf because I, I got to re kind of lay out my whole first order shelf. I have some like EU stuff on there and everything else, but I kind of want him with Kylo, but I just got to move some stuff around in order to make that kind of happen. 
final thoughts starting with the negatives and you know obviously you guys know how i feel i'm not sure if that approach to the hips is the best approach for articulation and like i said it may be but i'm not sold on it also the lack of ankle rocker the problem with that is that like why have all this articulation in the legs if you don't have an ankle rocker because ultimately the suspension of disbelief is going to fail every time if you can't get him to put his feet on the floor and that's really my only two negatives the positives are it's sculpted beautifully it's painted beautifully tons of articulation most of which is actually useful. Not too many accessories, kind of like just the appropriate amount. And I'm really impressed with how they incorporated the layers of the headdress with the cape and how it doesn't really get in the way of each other. A lot of smart decisions there. So it's a recommend for me, just be aware of those hips and the ankles. They kind of undo all the good that's done in the lower legs. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.